just like that, we are live. All right. Welcome back, Sam Boners. Welcome back to another episode of the Sam Boner Show. We are coming to you live today from Deck 60, thanks to our good friend, Mr. Brian Greasover, who will be joining us in just a second. Uh, hope you all tune in today. It's going to be one hell of an episode. Appreciate everybody's love and support from the very beginning. The Sam Boners, the Sam Boner Show has been nothing but a ton of fun. We are in the thick of summer, a final weekend in beer month, and it couldn't be any hotter, Bri. I think the heat index is 105. Yeah, it's hot. B-Sides has a surfing lesson at 1130, so we're here early. We're here often. We're going to fire this up. We're going to get it out to you hopefully by midday. If you're heading down to the shore, do yourself a, a favor and listen in to the Sam Boner Show. Again, we're having nothing but a ton of fun here. Fresh vibes from Deck 60. We're winding down beer month. Man alive. For the first time in the history of Sam Boners, we rolled out a beer month. We kicked off beer month four, five days prior to July because I happened to run into Mr. Jason Kelsey himself. I'm just going to continue to keep telling the story, Brian. Not often do you get an opportunity to slug a beer with a legend like Jason Kelsey, a Super Bowl champion. That was cool. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, we took him down, Zamboner. We I was took him down. Surprised to see that. One. I love the guy, but look, we took him down. Anybody want to want to race me in a, in a beer chug? Bring it on. A car bomb, especially. I'll put you under the table any day of the week. But nah, man, we're having nothing but a ton of fun here. Uh, the big question is, what do we roll out in August? I think we're just con going to continue to throw out some audibles. Love to shake it up. Uh, leaning towards a wild card month, which is anything goes. We could throw back beer month. We could maybe do an inaugural pizza month. Tables open. Send in your ideas. Chime in at all times. If you have any questions, suggestions, we're here for it. Uh, without further ado, a big shout out to uh, the boys at Not For Long Media. Media. Big shout out to Colin Thompson. Mr. Colin Thompson signed a one-year deal with the Minnesota Vikings. We couldn't be more pumped for you, Colin. All the best out there in Minnesota. You're darn tootin', you damn betcha. Uh, yeah, it's probably like 10 degrees in Minnesota. It's 105 degrees here in Sea Isle City. Definitely a little cooler. Definitely a little cooler. Uh, big thanks to our sponsors, the Original Fudge Kitchen, kitchen shipping fudge all over the country. Great time to pick up your fudge game. Another big shout out to our good friends at the Wharf, Damien and the crew holding it down. If you haven't been over to the Wharf this summer, Wildwood, New Jersey, a brand new beach bar seating an extra 500 people, beach games, new bar, food truck, go inside, live music. You can get there by foot. You can get there by car. You can get there by boat. One of my favorite spots to hit in the summertime, and we go way back when it comes to the wharf. And last but not least, a big shout out to our good friends, McGurks. McGurks back at home, our faithful Bri, Horsham and Fort Washington. B-Sides and I had a nice little lunch at McGurks not too long ago. What'd you get, Bri? The, the, the Nashville chicken? Uh, the chicken, the hot chicken sandwich. It was good. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was good. It was good. And then last but not least, uh, Big shout out to our boys at Hank Sauce, proud affiliate of Hank Sauce. If you're going to be ordering any type of hot sauce, do it online. They're doing all types of new collaborations right now. Type in the promo code Sam Bone. Get yourself some hot sauce. It's a beautiful, beautiful time to be a Sam Boner. Again, appreciate everybody tuning in. All right, you're probably thinking, who's this B-Sides guy? Who is this B-Sides guy? So a couple things, just to put some context in the place. B-Sides is one of my best friends, neighbors. We live in the same hood. We hang out all the time. He is basically the Sam Boner, one of the leaders of the Sam Boner house band. So if you remember, and I'll try to play the song as we kick <laughs> off this episode. I'll send it into the production team. But there's no – wait, what, how's it go? Oh, you put me no outside. Tip, step outside, just sitting here waiting for the sun to yeah. shine. Dude, popping a Sam Bone is an absolute classic. This kid is a total genius. It was a toe tapper, and <laughs> it was done back during COVID, so we had some time. You know, we, we were looking for stuff to keep ourselves busy, and we wrote that, too. Yeah, that was fun. yeah. But even furthermore, the reason I wanted to have Mr. B-Sides, Brian himself, on today's show – Brian is a an engineer at heart, a water and waste management engineer for a very large uh, water company here in Philadelphia. You know, when there's any type of disaster, when there's any type of emergency, Brian is first on the call. And this dude knows everything when it comes to water. And there was this night 
dates back probably like seven, eight months ago. My wife, Brian's wife, the four of us are, you know, sitting at the back bar at my house, having a couple of beers like we should be doing, hanging out. And the conversation came up around like, why Philadelphia? Why New York when it comes to good quality bread, baking bread? And then just even furthermore, why can't they perfect a good quality roll or even a good quality cheesesteak outside of, let's just say, the East Coast? Like, you can't take a Lee's Hoagie House. You can't take an Angelo's Pizzeria and relocate it out to California and perfect the same exact product. So we start to get to thinking, right? Like, why does New York perfect the bagel? Why does New York perfect the pizza? Why does Philly perfect the sandwiches, right? The reason we rolled out Sam Boners is because Philadelphia is the sandwich capital of the world. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to the bread. And that's why folks like Karangi and Angelo's Pizzeria are dominating the food and sandwich circuit here in Philadelphia. Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for it's having A little me. nervous. Look, debut of the Sam Boner show. This guy is the <laughs> ultimate Sam Boner. Have you Sam Boned any beers yet? Uh, more than a few. This, this past <laughs> week, we've been on vacation for two weeks, a uh, week and a half for myself. And yeah, we've had our fair share. We've, we've cleaned out the fridge pretty good. We're wrapping up, getting ready to head home. Um, what is your favorite beer go-to? What's your go-to? For the beach? The, I've been drinking the Modelo Oros. They're Ooh. like the Mick Ultras of um, kind of the more Mexican flavor, which I enjoy. It's not as sweet, maybe. I'm not sure. There's just something about I'll it. I'll tell I like you it. what. That Keep sounds... it light for the beach because... You're there for a long time. Yeah. yeah and he's surfing. He's going to surf at 1130. Yeah. But no, that's really a good, that's a that. good, that sounds like a good beach beer. I just had the Cape May Tam lines. It was like a Mexican lager. I haven't had that. I've heard it's really light. Good. Yeah. It, it was almost yeah. like one of those toast, like those lime Tostillo chips, man. Yeah. It's amazing. I've heard it's that's amazing. Good. I got to try that. That's on the list. We haven't made it to any breweries these past couple of weeks, but we did on the bread note. We had Berardi brothers and I tell you what, they're outside Philly, but man, they make a good sandwich. Shout yeah, out Berardi brothers. Steak. They're also here in Sea Isle City, too. Got that recommendation off of one of the, I don't know if it was the videos or, or one of the podcasts, but that was on the short list for uh, this trip. Yeah, so no. And, and and you bring up a good point, and that's kind of what I'm I'm looking for that segue. And another shout out I'd like to make uh, is to Lou and his mom. If you haven't been down to Bristol, PA, Lou and his mom started a cheesesteak place called Loretta's Cafe. And their spin is right. They're bringing in the sirloin. They're bringing in the Cooper Sharp. But their spin is that they're bringing bread up from New York. And it's like a nice, okay. fresh Italian baguette of some sort. It's really, really good. Like, I almost put it in the top 10. I think we put it in the honorable mention, like right outside the top 10. They're rookies or rookie of the year. That's what we gave them. But it definitely tastes different, Bri, right? So you have your Lysios rolls. You have your, you have your Amoroso rolls. And then you come over here in Jersey, you get uh, the Aversa. Uh, then there's a Karangi down in South Philly. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on some of these. You got Angelo, Danny Angelo's Pizza baking their own bread. You got Sarcones right next to him. Um, at the end of the day, like the reason why Philadelphia is producing all these unbelievable sandwiches, hoagies, hot roast porks, cheesesteaks to be specific, is because of the bread. And at the end of the day, that bread is good because we are blessed yeah. with a very good W O O D E R water system. Water. Yeah. Talk to us True. about I mean, the water system here in PA. So, I mean, the Philadelphia water system is like one of the historics. You go downtown, you see the, the, it's, it's a museum now, right? Like it's a monument it, and it should be, it's um, one of the, you know, earliest treatment systems in the world. We were pulling it off the Schugel at the time, running pumps with it and doing everything, pumping it up to a hill, which is now where the museum is, right? And it was flowing by gravity from there to feed this, you know, brimming city, you know, this this new new city. Um, but I, I did do some homework before this, you know, to figure out why does water impact bread? Because it's definitely regional, right? New York, you got the Catskills. It's pretty fresh water. It's coming down. Until recently, there really wasn't much more than just adding some disinfection, some chlorine. So, you know, it's a couple things. It's the it's the pH and then it's the total dissolved solids or the alkalinity. Right. Um, so it's basically how many what types of minerals are in there? What what mix of minerals are in that water naturally? Right. So, you know, you could standardize bread and make bread anywhere by going through, you know, the best filtration and just get pure water. But it's not going to make the best bread. 
right? The best bread requires some level of those minerals because it affects how the yeast are working, the fermentation process, how long it takes, because it's some of those minerals are food for the yeast. So it's, you know, lengthening or shortening the fermentation process and it's going to change the flavor of the bread ultimately and how, and how does, it cooks. And too. why does that vary? Not only state to state, why does that vary like, like almost like county to county? Like you come over the the, the, the water, I mean, yeah. sorry, the river yeah. and everything changes. Yeah. Well, I mean, a river is going to be obviously a divide for aquifers, right? So the water's makeup is going to change with geography, you know, um, geological formations, everything in the ground. If it's well water, if it's surface water, it's still, you know, getting filtered through by the geology, by the land. And it's picking up different mixes of minerals in different areas. You so hear that, like, Sam Boners? The divide of local. the aquifers. That's why I wanted to have B-Sides on today, because not only is he wicked smart, he has a good understanding of all the different waterways and how they lead. Well, well <laughs> not a full understanding. We're out here on the East Coast. But, Bri, like, does all of this reason, this rhyme or reason of kind of what you just explained, have everything to do with why, like, you, you as you get closer into New York, they thrive off the New York bagel. New York is... You know, I want to say New York is like the pizza capital of the world, where Philadelphia yeah. is the sandwich capital of the world. We produce some really good pizza here, not as much yeah. as, but even if you get up to like Massachusetts, uh, what's it, uh, Lock, not Brookhaven, Lockhaven, like that's another pizza pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like again, like why? I mean, the Northeast is pretty, pretty blessed with abundant, you know, w clean water sources for the most part. We're pretty lucky just in general. Um, with how much we have. And I would say, you know, broadly the Northeast region, we're, we're pretty blessed. Um, and you could probably use this water to make good, good breads, you know, pretty universally in the region. And then there's probably microcosms of that, right? Like you kind of sparked in me and I can't speak definitively on it. Like, could you map out aquifers related to regional tastes for bread and like what's well known? Like if you said, okay, start to pick out the best pizza, pizza joints, the best bagel shops, the best sandwich shops, and then match them up to aquifers. Just kind of overlay these things on a map. My brain is kicking. No, we are officially want... talking aquifers, and that is exactly what's going on right I, now. I kind of want to <laughs> dig into that in some spare time. I mean, there are, you know, you can use the GIS system to do that. We've got, you know, aquifers, you know, the, the USGS, US Geological Survey, you know, publishes this data. You can pull it into a mapping system. Then you'd need someone like, you know, the Sam Boners or an expert in where are these best shops and then overlay those maps yeah, and see, see if they line up i, I mean, don't know for next that's kind of fun <laughs> i don't think we're, we're necessarily experts i think yeah at the end of the wow. day we're we're full of shit honestly closest, bri. To, closest to sandwich experts that you know, know bri we I mean. <laughs> and I, you know I, I mean this in all sincerity i i i had danny uh danny on from angelo's it's a, it's an episode i think it was like episode 22 one. One 23 yeah. he was a pistol that guy's awesome he's amazing dude yeah. and we could have went on and on and on and on uh, that said, I don't know if he was thinking straight that day, but he clearly said that he was confident enough that if he wanted to, he could fly out to California mm -hmm. and produce the same exact cheesesteak. But based off your knowledge and your intelligence around the water system here on the East Coast, I find that hard to believe. And there's a reason why people haven't been able to perfect a better product out West. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, you could just take any water from any source and just filter it all the way down to like pure water. Right. But that's going to not produce the kind of same taste of bread that you, 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 you know, you're used to, or you're maybe trying to get, you'd literally have to add back in certain, you know, minerals at, at very small levels. Yeah. But, and, and you're not tasting the minerals in the bread necessarily, but the way they affect the yeast and the fermentation process, I think multiplies, you know, the, the impact they could have on the flavor of the bread as opposed to just saying, well, it's adding, like adding a little salt, you know, it's not, it's not the same. So it really does boil really, down from the water system and like the like river to river to lake. To like, I, I think there's a reasonable case to say that impacts the bread. Yeah. Now, could he make just as good of a sandwich with a little different tasting bread? Probably. I mean, like that guy seems really passionate and like a, like a genius in sandwich making. So, you know, to the average consumer, maybe they wouldn't taste the difference, but if you were just side by side tasting bread, yeah, you might notice. Well, it's funny you say that because yeah. I've had a lot of people that have actually, you know, referenced Danny's roles at Angelo's almost mm -hmm. as if it was a New York bagel. Right. And yeah. that's the, th that's the thing. There's nothing like a fresh New York bagel. Uh, 
especially when you're you're waking up after a, a banger of a, a fish concert at Madison Square Garden. The first thing you're looking for <laughs> is a nice bacon, egg, and cheese oh, on a yeah. New York bagel. Yeah. Dude, this is fascinating. Though. I will say, we've had some, I won't say where, but the bagels here have kind of been a letdown. The eggs, the, the Taylor ham, it's all been good. Um, but we had one bagel the other day, and I forget where from, but like, it's just like, mm, kind of, kind of chewy, not, nothing, nothing special about it. Now, just now, the bagel. besides, where are you from? Originally? I'm from Baltimore. You're from ba Baltimore yeah. originally. Yeah. What's the, so what's the, uh, the, there's a couple places right in Baltimore, but like, again, like Baltimore struggles when it comes to cheesesteaks. You know, Colin lives in Annapolis and he hits some places. He throws some, some of these places up there in the high eights, high nines and, and, and no, no, not, nothing taken against yeah. what he's doing out there, but they don't look like nines. In my personal opinion, they look like more sevens and eights because of that bread, that roll looks yeah. a little. I mean, it, you make a fair point. Baltimore, I guess, for one, is a smaller city. But as far as bread baking goes, I mean, H&S Bakery was founded and capital and, and is, I believe, still in Baltimore. It used to be right down on the harbor in Harbor East. Guy sold that, made a ton of money probably. It's all high rises now. and moved out to the county, I believe. But H&S Bakery makes the buns for McDonald's. I mean, Baltimore has a huge history in bread. Like interesting. So the water, I think, could sustain it. I think there's just something else culturally. Maybe it's not a focus on the sandwich. You got a little Italy. It's small. I mean, again, Baltimore's like what half the size or less of Philly, a quarter, something like that. So, but then at the end of the day, Baltimore is known for crabs, crabs, and seafood, anything from the bay. So maybe it just went that direction. Like you can't get crabs as good as Baltimore anywhere else. Yeah, no. Because I remember you know, going to this one. Mix. Yeah, yeah. I remember going to this place out in. Uh, Rash, I don't Rev Ray recommended it. It was an unbelievable crab cake sandwich. And I talked to the owner for a while and he was yeah. like, he was even looking into getting rolls from Philadelphia because it's only a short hour yeah. and a half ride. And I think that's the struggle uh, from afar is why people haven't been able to perfect the product outside of just this Philadelphia region. I know Wawa has gotten stores into, you know, Florida and yeah. you're starting to see that. I mean, I guess they can, tr they can truck the bread. Yeah. Now, what do you think? What, what's your travel. thought on the like the half frozen process for people to, you know, cook the bread, freeze it, and then when you unthaw it, you got to reheat it for a couple. It works. I mean, it's definitely better than pulling a piece of bread like out of the bread drawer, right, or off the counter. Yeah. Is it the same as a fresh baked piece of bread or rolled? No. No. Lisa started making bread at home, just like in a crock pot, basically, obviously in the oven, but like making the dough from scratch, putting it in and then cooking it. And for the extra time, I mean, you still got to cook it and heat it. You know, it saves you a little time, but you do compromise. Yeah. In terms it's, of just a, it's just an interesting conversation. Uh, Brian and I are just having some fun here on vacation. Again, we're posted up on deck 60 here, Sea Isle City. Uh, another big quick, big shout out to all our sponsors, friends of the show. Appreciate the support. I always just thought this was a very intriguing concept. And again, like, you know, I, I, I hooked up with some fans from Canada just this just this past day. We chopped it up at the Man Music Center for the fish show. I'm 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 crawling. I'm crawling back to reality here. I, I'm, I, it's been a, it's been a slow it was a slow death. But no, we're all good here. But like these guys are coming in from Canada because they are in love with sandwiches. They hit up donkeys. They hit up John's roast pork. They hit up the Knicks. We took them to Angelo's and they're like, they're salivating over this shit. And then they're even saying there is nothing like this. Like Mick, you can't come to Toronto and even have a lick of what this is like, especially yeah. the bread. I mean, as someone from Baltimore, proud of the city and everything, but like no Philly, it can't compete with Philly when it comes to like sandwiches and food. Except for maybe the seafood, the crabs and stuff, anything from the. Bay. I wonder. I wonder but why. I wonder why, like, it's so far off. I mean, we're talking Philadelphia to New York, even Bry. Like, yeah. why can't we have New York pizza just like New York does, and why can't New York do cheesesteaks just like mm -hmm. we do? Like, why yeah. not? Yeah. No, I mean, again, I think some of it has to do with the water. There's fundamental differences in how that you know makes bread, but a lot of it's got to be cultural too, right? Like just what's, what's taken off in certain areas, right? Um, and what the focus has been. I, I, well, I hope this was educational for the sand boners. I thought this was fun. Yeah, honestly, I think, it, I think it can continue to go on and on and on and on, but I'm going to work on that map. <laughs> the map. Yeah. Talk about the map. We need a sand boners map. This is the guy that's always been Chomping at me. Yo, where do I drive? I'm heading to the airport. Where do I stop and get a sandwich? Yeah, we'll open up the yeah. Sam Boners app. But no, we'll get there someday. Uh, nothing but nothing but fun uh, here at the Sam Boner Show. I hope everybody uh, has been enjoying the ride this far. 
we're right in the thick of summer. We got another full month ahead of us. Did we throw back beer month? I doubt it. We'll probably just shake it up, a little wild card style. Anybody has any suggestions, send them in. Um, new segment, Bry. I'm opening up a new segment today. Okay. It's well, it's not very original. It's called the buy or sell segment. Okay. All right, buy or sell. Ready? Down the shore for the week, two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golf cart, buy or sell. Nah. No. Nah. No. No golf, golf cart? Not not big on the golf cart. Wow. I like, if it was like something I wanted to drive more, I would do it. But like they're so expensive to, to rent or to buy. I'd rather just get like an old used convertible or something. You're getting at least the same experience, maybe a little bit more functionality. <laughs> open in the air, you're cruising. Like that's the feel. Like that that to me is the way to go. If you can get it electric, that's even better, right? Like an electric car, but but convertible. You know, Ford just came out with the E1000 electric motor conversion kit. Like you can take whatever kind of car you want. You find the right shop. Like me, the dream is old Bronco, old Bronco, like 80s, Ooh, right? Yeah. No top. Converted to electric, anti-lock brakes, power steering. That's I got to tell you, though. I take that, and I know that's going to be a little more than a golf cart, but you can drive it on the highway to and from Philly. Like, that's the way to go. And then once you get here, come on. I got to tell you, the, 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 the new Bronco is it's nice. sharp. It's like, nice. At first, I thought it was, like, too trendy. Everybody was buying them. Everybody is buying them. But when the doors are out and the roof is off, right. that is a freaking cool beach cruiser. It is. It really yeah. is. Way better than a The old school car. Bronco, I though, mean, is a great the, throwback. Or like a Jimmy. Yeah. Remember the Chevy Jimmy? Yes, yeah, same thing. Oh, yeah. my yeah, God. Same deal. Talk about a throwback. And it's funny. My, guy, my second yeah. my second uh, on the list for buy or sell was electric cars. Buy or sell. Buy. Yeah. 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 100%. I saw a couple new ones, especially the, the new Porsche, the electric Porsche. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yep. And, you know, you're saving the uh, you're saving the environment, right? It is. I mean, it's definitely a huge step in the right direction, right? The power still comes from somewhere, but it's way, way, way more efficient to generate energy in a power plant and distribute it and charge a battery than it is to put gas in a car and burn it. Granted, it's a lot quicker to fill up a fuel tank and, and we can get, what, two, three hundred miles on a charge. That's still what we're sticking with. But that'll get me to and from the shore or to and from the Poconos. Definitely as a second car, electric. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, last one. I don't believe you have this item. Okay. I've been using it for the last six weeks. In the very beginning, I was in love with it. As I continue to use it, I'm starting to lean towards it being a little bit more overrated. The Blackstone Grill. Oh, I have not used it. I've heard a lot of good things. Pretty much nothing but good things. Um, I buy, I, I'd say buy or like a griddle top for a gas stove, like kind of the same difference. You know, once you put the top on it, you're not, are you getting a lot of smoky flavor? I'm getting a lot of thing? grease. Yeah. And the problem is like, there's certain things I can cook on there that are good, like vegetables or like pancakes, yeah. uh, something See, really nice. dry, like rice. But like, when I go to throw 10, 15 burgers and 10 dogs on there, yeah. it just turns into this big, big grease pit. Yeah. I'm ruining all my shorts. It's a lot of work. It's a very tedious cleanup process. I don't know. Sometimes I just like firing up the grill. At the end of the day, when you go to reuse it again, you can clean it when you go to reuse it. I think personally, when you're using the Blackstone, once you're done using it, you got to clean it up real nice and have it nice and prepared for the next time around. I've I've seen how you take care of your cast iron. It's pretty. uh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty pretty thorough. Oh, yeah. Which is good. It's a process. But again, like if you're burnt and you don't have the time or the yeah. attention span, I don't recommend getting the Blackstone. I would just stick to the Honestly, <laughs> what you need is something you can throw like a big cast iron skillet on when you want to do, you know, I got five people, six people, I need to do pancakes real quick, or I need to do like vegetables or something. But then I can take that off and just do an open top grill when I want to do burgers, steaks, and everything like that. Nice. I, nice. That, that to me would be, I would definitely buy that. Yeah. But I think generally the idea of the Blackstone, the, the griddle, I need one of those. Even if it's like a plug-in countertop one just for flipping pancakes on Sunday morning, yeah. I need that. Yeah. Well, I know this segment wasn't very original, but I thought it was cool. Like um, for all you listening out there, uh, we got some shows brewing in the fall. Anybody interested having the Sam Boners come to the fall and do a live show? Uh, you got a two-for-one package here. B-Sides Rock. Give That's a little right. plug to your uh, – uh, At – the underscore B underscore sides underscore rock on Instagram, the B sides rock. It's me and my brother, uh, mostly covers 
Yeah. Also one original for the Sam Boners. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and if there's a bass player out there that wants to come in and have some fun with these guys, they're open arms always. Nothing but just good times, good vibes. Uh, they played at Wissahickon, or not Wissahickon, they played at Chestnut Hill a couple of times over the Kate winter. May, Kate May Brewery. Kate May Brewery recently. Lots of fun, always with the B-Sides Rock crew. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. This has been another just fun, quick episode. We're not here to bore you. And if we did, we apologize. I thought it was very educational. Quick 25, 30 minutes. Uh, what do we got this weekend? Final weekend, beer month. Phillies head out to Pittsburgh. I've never been to Pittsburgh. Do you believe that? You've never been to never been to the Pittsburgh. The stadium or the city? I've never been to Pittsburgh. That's crazy. <laughs> I went to Penn State, State College. That's crazy. Never been to Pittsburgh. I, I'm from Baltimore. I've been to Pittsburgh like five, six times. So it's a great city. It is. And it's a great ballpark. Phil's take on the Pirates and under 500 team Pirates. Phil's, I think, are right now 55 and 47, looking good. If the end, if the season ended today, they would be in the playoffs. But uh, a lot of work to be had. Go O's. Uh, go oh, 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 Jesus. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that, Sam Bones. Everybody, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate everybody tuning in. Besides, nothing but a good time. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having us. Keep on Sam Bone, everybody. Sam Bone. And baby, it's on. Driving 45 minutes just